Welcome back, everybody. Matt and I'm back here. Hope you're doing well. Once again, before we get started today, like and subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button near the title of this video. But let's get started today. We got some very interesting news this past week. Apparently, uh, David Zaslav, the head of Warner Brothers, is still in the uh, Lord of the Rings business. And uh, this just hasn't been booming lately. No boom. No boom boom. Um, obviously, David Zaslav is trying to get Warner Brothers back on, their, back on top. They've been kind of going down over the years. A lot of that's in the, the DCU. And, you know, he's starting to be like, Yo, guys. We have this Lord of the Rings franchise. Why are we not doing anything with it? A million dollar franchise. Two, I mean more than that, in between the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit trilogy. We made millions of dollars off of this, off of these movies. Not to mention the amount of Academy Award wins that the Lord of the Rings trilogy made in the early 2000s, not to mention that last one over there, this picture in 2003, why are we not making more Lord of the Rings movies? Amazon is over there making the Rings of Power, and we're the one that actually have the rights to this franchise, and we're not doing it. The last Hobbit film came out in 2013. Or 2014, 2014. So by next year, it will be 10 years since The Hobbit, the last Hobbit film. Now, let me give you a little bit of backstory when it comes to me and this trilogy right here. This is my all time favorite trilogy. These are the movies that, I, outside of Gladiator, these, these, are the movies that made me want to become a filmmaker. Where did that go? Hey, we're not talking about that. We're just talking about these are the movies that inspired me to want to be a filmmaker. Just like the people that grew up in the 70s and 80s, like J.J. Abrams, who watched the original Star Wars trilogy, and that made them want to become a filmmaker. Well, these films are the movies that made me want to get into film. So I consider these more important to me than Star Wars. Sorry. Um, though I love these movies, I grew up with them, I love watching them. I saw each of them in the theater opening weekend. I had the poster of the two towers in my room ever since the second movie came out. Uh, Lord of the Rings is... my my then my all-time favorite movies, trilogy, whatever. Now, The Hobbit, I was disappointed in. I don't know why you take a, a book that's only 300 pages and turn it into three movies. Three movies that are over two and a half hours each. Now, I think taking the first Harry Potter book, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, which is only about 300 and something pages, and making it into three movies. It can't be done. Unless you add so much new stuff that has nothing to do with the original book. Um, like, why is Legolas in The Hobbit? He's not in The Hobbit book, but he's in the movies. Anyway, but we're not here to talk about that. But I did want to give you a little bit of my... You know, I love the Lord of the Rings. Disappointed with the Hobbit. I always use this analogy. The Lord of the Rings trilogy is like the original Star Wars trilogy. The Hobbit films are like the Star Wars prequels. And funny enough, the Hobbit is a prequel to the Lord of the Rings. So, ha! Anyway... Apparently, David Zaslav, David Zaslav, like I just said, is in the business of making more of the, more of the Rings movies. And that Peter Jackson, Fran Walsh, and Philip Boyan 
all three who worked on the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit films. Since Peter Jackman did do the Hobbit also. Are all, are, I are talking to David Zaslav. Now, we don't know if Peter Jackman is going to come in and direct one movie, two movies, three movies. We don't know if there's going to be an actual new trilogy or they're just going to start with one movie and see what happens. But that's good news that Peter Jackman, at least they're talking to him, maybe for some advice, maybe for story ideas. But the question is, what is this Lord of the Rings movie going to be? Is it going to be before the prologue of In the Fellowship of the Ring? Like the first battle with Sauron that we saw at the beginning of Fellowship of the Ring, the prologue? That would be cool. And everything leading up to that battle. And then have like the final movie, whether it's one movie or two movies, me, like, that epic battle in full, like we saw in, like, Return of the King, like, those epic battles, or in the Two Towers at Helm's Deep. That would be really interesting. I also thought, I also heard this, what if this is, like, an actual sequel to the Return of the King? Now, before people go, huh? What? There's no sequel to Lord of the Rings. The Return of the King. Well, and they come up with an original story. Let's say the movie takes place... I don't know. It's the 20... Last year was the... This year's what? The 20th anniversary of The Return of the King? 20 years? Yes, it'll be 20 years since the third Lord of the Rings movie. What if they actually took a story 20 to 30 years later in the future and obviously it's been 30 years, another evil has risen, of course, why not? And guess what? You remember that scene in uh, The Two Towers where we saw like an old, or well in the scene we saw Aragorn at his, on his deathbed funeral with Liv Tyler, Arwen, standing over it. But what if we, I don't think we're not going to have that, but when we jump, you know, before that, like, ten years or maybe a year, maybe five years before that scene, and we have an older Aragorn, King of Gondor, Aragorn, the rider from the north. Um, Aragorn, Vigo Mortensen returns. And this is kind of, kind of me like a legacy sequel. And you know what? That's the, that's the new thing these days. Legacy sequels. Jurassic World, Star Wars, Creed, Scream. Um, what else? Halloween. Anyway, they can make a legacy sequel in The Lord of the Rings. You can bring back Viggo Mortensen and Aragorn. You can bring back Liv Tyler, Arwen. And guess what? Guess what, my friends? You have Gimli, Jonathan My Myers Davis, who's going to be showing up in the new Indiana Jones. He's still kicking. Bring him back as Gimli. Hey, Orlando Bloom really isn't doing anything. Bring back Legolas. Bring back David Wyndham. Who was, um, Faramir, Boromir's brother. Bring him back. Hey, bring back some of the hobbits. Sean Aston, Samwise Gemji. Why not? Um, Domino, what is it? Mary and Pittman. Bring them back. Why not? They're still around. I mean, you can bring them back. And Erwin, Miranda Otto, bring her back. You're going to have an interesting legacy sequel. And then also introduce new characters that if you are going to make a trilogy, you still have the some of the original characters and actors from the trilogy 
with new characters. I think that would be an awesome idea. I think that would be an awesome idea. Can you imagine a movie when you go see the trailer and you see Vigo Mortensen back? Uh, Orlando Bloom, Jonathan Rice Myers, I mean Jonathan Rice Davis, Marion Pittman, Sean Astin, Dude. And you hear that Lord of the Rings music? Noon. Noon. I'll be in the theater just losing my mind. Okay? I'll be losing my mind. So, but here's the thing. I have one caveat on that. Do not. Do not. And I mean, do not. Under any. Any. Circumstances. Do the 48 frames per second. 48 frames per second. We saw that in the Hobbit films. I don't watch the Hobbit films. Not only because I think they drew out the story. And it's not as interesting. But the way they shot that movie. I don't know if my eyes. I can't watch it. It messes my eyes up. And I have great vision. And... When I'm watching The Hobbit, my eyes always hurt. Because they shot it in 48 frames per second. It doesn't look natural. It looks like we're watching like a soap opera on a stage or something. It don't look good. Sorry. Go back to shooting on film. Like these movies. And I want real locations. I don't want this all digital CGI green screen crap. That we got in the Hobbit. Who? Oh, you know what made these movies great? Is they shot on location. In New Zealand. They built the set for Helm's Deep. They built the building that the mountain hilly thing at the beginning of the two towers. That Miranda Otto was standing on. They built that whole scene in the Fellowship of the Ring. Where our Erwin is on the horse. And the, and the Nazgul is chasing after her in the field, open field. That was all on location, all real, okay? The field, the battle of the Return of the King. Yeah, you got CGI elephants and all that, but the battle, the field, all real location. Real horses riding down a field. No more CGI crap. No, no. No green screen bullshit. No, no. Get back to what made these movies great. The filmmaking. The stuff that I fell for. That I fell in love with. The filmmaking. That's what you need to do in this Lord of the Rings new prequel, sequel, whatever it's going to be. So what do you guys think, Ivan? When I heard this, I was excited. But let me know in the comments below. Are you excited to hear this news? Are you a fan of Lord of the Rings? And, yeah, let me know. Do you want more like a prequel before the Lord of the Rings, but obviously after The Hobbit? Or do you want something after Return of the King? Let me know in the comments below. Matt in the back here.